All right, guys, I'm going to try and show you the easiest way to change the oil on a uh, 2020 Kawasaki Mule SX fuel injected. So there's a couple different things you want to do. Um, anytime you change the oil, you want to change the spark plug. I just did that uh, not too long ago, though, so that won't be part of this video. But you do want to check the uh, air filter. So you had to take that off. All you do literally is pop those four clips off. Take a peek in there. It's pretty clean. Air filter is clean. Well, let's put it back. And I know this video is going to be a little shaky, but there's really no great way to put a tripod up and do this because I'm moving around so much. So I'll just try and keep it as still as I can. So this is all behind the seat. Just to start, start you back. Pull this up. Here's the engine oil dipstick. Here's the spark plug. And the oil filter is down under here as is the drain plug. So I wanted to show you kind of a quick and easy way of how I pop these or where it's off. You can do it from underneath, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so the easiest way is to take this panel off and rather than screwdriver, you just stick these needle nose pliers under the edge of it and pop it up. I already did all of them, but I just wanted to kind of give you a, a brief rundown of easy way to do it. So let's take this panel up. This just a little easier access to it. And what I usually do is I stick that. How did I do it? There we go. That's what I did last time. All right. So that just gives you a little bit clearer line of sight underneath. You can't take it all off because these obviously run between the hoses. You could if you want to do all that, but it's not worth it to me. So let's see if I can show you. The drain plug is right in the center of the screen. Let me go around to the other side and I will show you how we take that off. All right. Lean in here, see if I can show you. So that's the drain plug. This is a 3 fourths inch socket. Let's see if I can do this without being too shaky and film at the same time. It's pretty much hand tight. You don't need to wrench it down. But just undo it there. You want your oil to be fairly warm when you do this so you get all the contaminants out along with it. It drains easier. And I'll show you here. I put an oil bucket underneath and a towel or actually a moving blanket, so I don't get it on the driveway if I miss that. Learn that the hard way. And we'll just set this oil plug right here. And also, I set it, I have the uh, mule a little bit of a forward angle. The reason being is, I don't know if you can hardly see this. Yeah, not hardly. There you go. You can see the hole right there where it's draining, it leans it forward a little bit so you get all the oil and the contaminants out. Uh, rather, is, rather than sitting it um, horizontally, it's angled, the bottom is, towards the drainage hole so that uh, it all comes out, but this just helps. All right, we'll let it drain. All right. So this one's gonna be difficult to video because there's so little space under here. Right here is the oil filter. And I'll set you up here. See if I can get this on camera. But this may not make it on camera. We'll see. We'll try that. So you can use an oil filter wrench or what I typically do is I just use these big old honking channel locks, as I call them. You just have to be careful. I'm not over tightening it. Oh, 
in there. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but there's a little drainage over here. I take this off the bottom. There we go. So I'm not sure you can see that or not, but it's a small drainage uh, reservoir for the uh, air, air filter system. So it has a little crimp tab on it. Let's pull that off. And it has this little reservoir. It's full of gunk and water. That keeps it out of your air system. I'm just going to tap this out on the driveway over here. And you should clean that out every time you change your oil as well. That'll keep moisture out of your air system, which is the whole goal of that little reservoir. To put it back, just literally stick it right back over the end. Hopefully you guys can see this. And this is the little tension crimper. There you go. That holds it on. Put it all right back over. And you're set. So like I said, you should do that every time you change the oil too. This is our new filter. It's Napa Gold 1394. Um, this is just the one I got. There's a few others that are compatible OEM, but this is this one I chose. It has, uh, I think, a higher micron filtrage than the cheap one. You can get a cheap one that's about $3, but for about $6, you can get this one that's on sale. Normally, I think it's $9. So small investment to make to hopefully ensure a longer lifespan uh, of the engine. And like I said, with these oil filters, righty tidy, lefty loosey. So I'll snug this up by hand. And I'm going to give it more turn because it was little, had a little oil on it and I was tightening it so I want to make sure I dig it snug. Yeah, it's plenty tight. Alright, so let's get our drain plug back in. I'm going to start it down here and then I'll just snug it up from the top. It's just easier to get to up there. And tight, and then I'm just gonna give it like a quarter turn or so just to snug it. There we go. All right, so let's put our cover back down. Close the dipstick out and let's get one quart of oil in. This should take right at 1.2 quarts, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and put one quart in. We'll start it up and then we'll uh, move it to a flat surface in the garage. Um, and the reason for doing it in the garage is that way it's perfectly level. Which is how the manufacturer recommends uh, uh, filling and checking the oil level. So, let's check 
the oil. And just for the heck of it, let's see where we're sitting at. And we're at the high mark. But it hasn't been circulated through the engine yet either. So let's turn around, get in the garage, and we'll check it again. And we are at low. Just barely. We're just barely right at the low mark. So, let's fill up a little more. And you can use a funnel too if you like. I just oftentimes don't. And we'll wipe the little excess around the edge off. There we go. And let's put the dipstick back in. Let's see how we're doing. We are at the low mark still. bit more up right. wipe the little excess off there and let's check the dipstick again. All right, so we are three fourths the way between low and high. which is about perfect, because when we start it up, we'll have some circulation through again. Let's do that. And we are right halfway between low and high, which is ideally where we want to be. Let's check one last time. So we are right halfway between low and high. I'm not gonna even try and put that on camera. I know with this lighting and using my phone as a camera, I probably won't get it, so. But you know what the low and high on a dipstick looks like and it's halfway between there, so. All right, guys, well, that is it. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any ideas for future videos, let me know, and as always, Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day. Thank you.